Hello and welcome to our Q2 investment update. My name's Jordan Gillies. I'm one of the partners here at Saltus. I'm going to kind of act as compare today, a bit like Jonathan Ross, but with shorter hair. Uh, I'm joined by one of the other partners in the business, Mike. Mike, do you want to give us a little bit about what you do? Sure. I'm Mike Stimson. I'm a partner on the investment committee, which means I'm part of the team that manages all of Saltus clients' portfolios. So you could say that you possibly had a bit of a tough Q2 in the investment team then. You know, I was, I was watching the news this morning and it all looks pretty scary. Um, Leicester's going into local lockdown. The States looks pretty worrying. You know, we're seeing second waves in Texas, California. You know, should our clients be concerned about this or can you offer them some, some reassurance? I think probably a bit of both. You know, there's, there's no doubt that these are worrying times. You know, the world's very different than it was even six months ago. Y you and I are sitting two metres apart. There's hardly anyone else around. Um, but there is also a disconnect between what we're seeing in the news headlines and what's been going on in investable asset markets. And really what we've seen over the last three months has, has been a story of, of recovery. Um, if you think about what happened in, in March that led to the big falls, we had coronavirus and lockdown and we had an oil price fall. And since then we've had the oil price recovery, we've had infection rates peak and start to tail off. And lockdown restrictions start to ease. You know, all of that at the same time as, as huge stimulus from central banks and governments. Um, over $18 trillion has been spent and pledged to the recovery efforts. You know, that's over 20% of, of, glo of global GDP. That, that's, that's quite a phenomenal amount, really. Have we, have we ever seen anything like this? No, no, we really haven't. I mean, you know, the word unprecedented gets sort of thrown around all the time now, but, but it really is unprecedented. And it's, it's sort of been the, the tide that, that lifts all ships. And, and it means that where we're sitting today, there's sort of fewer cheap asset classes to, to buy. But it does mean that, you know, most of our clients' portfolios over, over a 12 month period are, are flat or slightly positive. Which is quite amazing, really, when you, when you think about the context. I think if you if you think about the position that we've been in and what we've gone through over the, over the last three months, you know, it, it it's a result that that we'd be really pleased with. Yeah, and it sounds like quite a, a difficult ball to balance as well, because in one respect, we're talking about very challenging headlines, you know, concerns around a second wave and, and what that could do to to the economy, and we're kind of on this knife edge. But on the other, we're, we're talking about sort of quite quick recovery in, in asset prices. So. What have you actually even been doing in portfolios to try and balance that ball? Sure. So the, the first thing we did in April was we, we rebalanced the portfolios. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, is we sold some of the investments that had held up well and performed well and bought some of the things that, that, that had done less well. And, and that sound, kind of sounds counter to logic for a lot of people, you know, or difficult to do. You, know, you sell the stuff that, that's done really well and, and you kind of buy more of the things that aren't going so well. How, how do you approach that? I think it's not counter to logic. I think, you know, as, as an investor, what you're always trying to do is is sort of sell high and, and buy low. And if you think about it, you know, at its basics, that, that's all we were doing. Um, I, I think we have to look through the short term news, the short term noise almost, and, and invest over the longer term. And so that, that made it easier to make those investment decisions. I think the other thing that we've done is is we've really broadened out diversification. So. Um, you mentioned earlier about different parts of the world reacting differently, coming out of lockdown. Some look, look like they might have to go back in. Um, we've increased our allocation to global managers so that they have the flexibility to invest in the areas that are perhaps recovering more quickly. Um, I think the final thing that we've done when I mentioned earlier that, that the stimulus has been a huge factor in, in the recovery is make investments that directly benefit from that stimulus. So, you know, we know that central banks are forced buyers of, of credit. And so we've increased our exposure to credit over the last three months as well. And so in some ways you're kind of saying that everything seems to be okay and, it, and it's all going quite well. But at the same time, a lot of us are sat at home thinking lots of people have been furloughed. We're hearing about the, the greatest economic depression we've perhaps seen in years. You know, but but Mike's saying, don't worry, it's plain sailing from here. You know, what, what, what do you think about the future? I, I, is that the case? I, I think Mike isn't saying it's plain <laughs> sailing from here. Um, I'm, I'm sorry if I gave you that impression. Um, I think 
Look, I think, I think there are reasons to be cautiously optimistic. Although we're seeing certain areas look like, you know, they're going to have to go back into lockdown. We think it's unlikely that the whole world is going to go back into lockdown like we had in March. And so, you know, with against that backdrop, if it if it's not as bad as it is in March again, with all the stimulus that we've had on balance, we think we're going to be OK. Um, it's going to be a bumpy ride, though. I think we're still in a world where the equity markets are driven by in coronavirus news flow. And so, as you say, over the last few days, we've seen um, inf infection rates pick up in certain areas, and that's led to di more difficult markets. I think where we're heading, though, is at some stage in the second half of this year, um, the baton will be passed from you know, infection rates to economic recovery. And so the story really is going to be about how does the, econ how does the world economy recover from, from what's been a real shuddering halt. And that, I think, is always an interesting debate at the moment. How, what does the recovery look like? You, know, you, you, you hear a lot of people talking about this V-shaped recovery or it's going to be elongated. So I said, what, what's our view on that? Do we have an idea of, of, of what the recovery is going to look like, do you think? Yeah, so I think, I, I mean, I think the, the answer is it's too early to tell. Um, and we won't know for quite some time what, what the shape of the recovery is. I mean, the, the early signs, though, are, are good. So the, the chief economist at the Bank of England um, was saying yesterday that, you know, at the moment it looks to them like it might be a V-shaped recovery, although there are risks everywhere. So I think, you know, what we've seen as lockdown restrictions have eased, you know, particularly in this country, is consumer confidence has been quite high. People are out, people are spending money. Um, and that will be very supportive to, to a quicker recovery. You know, having said that, there's an awful long way to go before we're out of the woods here. And so that's why in portfolios, we've maintained the defensive investments. You know, we've maintained our weighting to gold, um, our holding of US dollars. You know, just in case things get a bit more difficult. You know, we think there's probably a, a few bumps in the road left to come. So that phrase, if I was going to summarise really, that phrase of cautiously optimistic is kind of where we're really sitting at the moment. That's kind of, that's kind of it for us. I think that's right. Fantastic. OK, well, thanks for joining me, Mike. Um, that's it from us today. If you have any further questions about what we've discussed, you know, Mike or myself would be happy to answer them. But do get in touch with your advisors as well, because they can talk you through and reassure you around any of this stuff and bring in a member of the investment team where needed. So we look forward to seeing you again at our next quarterly investment update. Mm -hmm.